Hello, my name is Jay and welcome to the channel. Singapore Zoo, the River Safari, the Night Safari and Yurong Bird Park are four open concept wildlife parks operated by Wildlife Reserve Singapore. And these parks are often ranked among the best in the world. With an astonishing variety of animals, an impeccable sense of animal welfare and a keen understanding of conservation and education, these parks have set a gold standard for others to aspire to. In this video, we will be looking at the aspects of habitat design and animal welfare that can be found primarily at Singapore Zoo, but also the River Safari and Jurong Bird Park. We're going to be covering quite broad areas and we're going to be keeping quite a relatively non-detailed view, but we will focus on aspects of these habitats that do stand out and make them unique. There are approximately 40 species of primates across the park. The Hamadryas baboon is an example of one with a very unique and well-themed habitat, made to resemble their Ethiopian environment in the wild, alongside tribal Ethiopian-themed visitor areas. The naturalistic approach to this habitat is truly impressive, with visitor viewpoints taking the form of Ethiopian huts and openings in the cliff face. And this truly gives the illusion that there are no actual barriers in place, putting the visitors on the same sort of eye level as the animals. The habitat is also much larger than initially assumed, and different viewpoints offer new glimpses into previously unseen areas with waterfalls bordering the inside of the habitat. Within this Ethiopian themed area, other animals that share the ecology and the environment of the Hamadreus baboon can also be found such as rock hyraxes and ground squirrels. Several species of primates are entirely free-ranging within the park, such as the Javan Langer, but all have dedicated habitat surrounded by water moats where they come to be fed and have shelter. These water moats give the impression of multiple islands all containing primate populations. The arboreal nature of these animals allows them to traverse the treetops and treetop shelters between the islands, and also across the tropical trees of the park itself, allowing for a truly massive range of motion, while simultaneously allowing for separation from the visitors by means of simply their mechanical motion, where they travel in the treetops and therefore just simply stay further away from the visitors. Further separation for different species can be created simply by the removal of specific trees, or by having trees slightly further apart, allowing these animals which can't jump that far or say climb across to have that degree of separation.
Great apes are not known to do very well in captivity, but the orangutans at Singapore Zoo are given the best care and habitat possible. They've got a large island type habitat with their own climbing structures and enrichment, but further to that, they are actually able to traverse the treetops across a massive area of this park, making them the only free ranging captive population of orangutans in the world. This gives them a much 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 larger range of motion comparable to a small area of forest really. The chimpanzees at Singapore Zoo, however, are not given the same range of motion because they are simply more aggressive animals and are not native to this habitat. However, they are given quite a large habitat where they live in a large family unit and are given many many different forms of enrichment which they cycle through to avoid getting them bored. Semi-aquatic habitats are an excellent opportunity for multiple viewpoints for visitors. The Pygmy Hippopotamus habitat is a particularly interesting one due to its layout. It has two viewing points allowing for both terrestrial and underwater viewing of the animals on two opposite sides of the habitat and contains a family unit of Pygmy Hippos. The deep interior of the habitat itself is not viewable by visitors allowing for a degree of privacy for the animals. Another semi-aquatic mammal is the small-clawed Asian otter. You can find them quite close to the zoo entrance where they live in a slightly smaller habitat to accommodate for their smaller size, in a habitat with a moat, which they often make use of as part of their habitat as opposed to what it usually would be a pure barrier. At Jurong Bird Park, visitors are afforded the opportunity to get up close with a variety of large water birds such as flamingos and pelicans via a boardwalk system. Guests are brought up to eye level with a variety of flamingos and up to 7 pelican species, some of which are a key feature in one of these feeding presentations that go on alongside this boardwalk at a semi-aquatic presentation stage, which is one of the more impressive features of this area of Jurong Bird Park. Known as Reptopia, the reptile house at Singapore Zoo is an excellent mixture of outdoor, indoor and mixed habitat spaces. These accommodate the large variety of reptile, amphibian and insect species within the park. Larger species such as the Komodo dragons and giant tortoises are given large open habitats with moat barriers or in the case of the tortoises, a simple wooden fence. Larger crocodilians such as the estuarine crocodile and the mugger crocodile are given semi-aquatic habitats with large underwater viewing areas.
Within the indoor areas, the different species are exhibited in a variety of naturalistic vivariums and paludariums, some of which are large enough to span an entire wall and have both terrestrial and underwater viewing points, such as in the case with the Cayman Lizard and the Mata Mata. The African savanna region of the park is one of the more conventional areas of the zoo, with habitats familiar to regular zoo visitors. However, interesting habitat layouts, a few in unique species including the Red River Hog, the lack of fences, and interactive feeding tours make this part of the zoo stand out above others. Zookeepers take tours around the habitats at specified times and provide the graders and predators with an afternoon snack as shown with the wild dogs and cheetahs here. This additional interactive and educational feature elevates this part of the park and elevates the zoo as a whole, as similar features can be seen across the park, with well-informed and educated zookeepers teaching visitors about these animals as they go along. One of the most impressive regions of the zoo is the Fragile Forest Habitat, which is a large walkthrough aviary with a variety of small terrestrial mammals, birds and bats. It's truly a massive area with both a ground park system and an elevated canopy walk, allowing for an up-close view with a variety of species which can often only be seen from a distance, such as the flying fox or the squirrel monkey. Back at Jurong Bird Park, the variety of aviaries present are absolutely excellent, with the majority being walk-through habitats. Some, such as the lorry loft, allow visitors to traverse up to three different levels of elevation amongst the trees, with bird feeders being hung close to eye level on the paths. Visitors are able to get a very up-close look at a tremendous variety of species this way, and it makes Jurong Bird Park one that stands out amongst others.
The river safari is where the Panda Conservation Center is located, a large temperature-controlled building containing giant and red pandas. Often when pandas are loaned from China, they provide detailed specifications on how to provide the ideal care for them. Often it is seen that large amounts of resources are spent in zoos to meet these specifications, which can often be beneficial for pandas, and to a zoo like this which can divert its resources without neglecting other animals, it is an excellent system. However, other parks can struggle with this when pandas, such a high ticket animal, enters the park, it can lead to other animal welfare being neglected. The addition of red pandas to this habitat in particular allows for a bit of interest to be adding to this habitat because the giant pandas, although they are a big ticket animal, are often found asleep and the red pandas are simply a bit more active and they often traverse their habitat which crosses over the visitor path via trees and branches. Other habitats of interest across the park include the rainforest sun bear habitat and the walkthrough eastern kangaroo and wallaby habitat. All of the habitats within the Singapore Zoo and the other parks within the Singapore Wildlife Reserve Network are primarily made with animal welfare in mind. Privacy, enrichment and support are at the forefront with the visitor experience still done extremely well but taking a bit of a back seat. Thank you for exploring these parks with me, and as a final note, please enjoy this little red panda plushie that I obtained at the zoo, and this video of a robot making an omelette, which I recorded while I was at my hotel. Any and all feedback is welcome, please do leave a comment and subscribe if you enjoy this content, and thank you for watching.